Hello again, it is I, Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and welcome to another video on ACS revision in less than 10 minutes. We hope. We're also going to continue with open fluid appliances but this time we're going to be looking at this kind of stuff. So this is what's commonly known as a precast flue system or a class 2 chimney system. But before we get into this video, please could you take some time to subscribe because it helps the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when we're uploading videos. Remember, Mondays and Wednesdays. Now as usual, let's stop waffling and let's get on with this video because I've only got 10 minutes. So what is this uh, precast flu system then? Well in the late 1960s, early 1970s when we had a bit of a house building boom, instead of building class one brick chimneys, they decided to do class two chimneys which were um, precast flues. So basically a precast flue system is a load of concrete blocks put on top of each other and uh, goes up to the loft and it's built into the wall. We'll have a look at it here behind me in a minute. Now, a couple of things about this being bonded into the wall. First of all, it gave a flat finish, though they didn't look like there was a chimney in there anyway, because it, it was built into the cavity of the wall. The next thing is plastering over it. So you can't just put roughing and finished plaster over a precast flue system. It had to be dot and dabbed, because if you didn't dot and dab it, it would crack the plaster and lift the blocks. And I've actually seen it done. A few years ago now, I went to a house and you could actually see the blocks all the way through the house up into the loft and the loft extension had been fitted and when we did the flu flow test, it all came into the loft where they were kids' bedrooms. Very, very naughty. So that's the main thing when you're inspecting them, you need to be seeing dot and dab, not um, finished plaster, well, roughing and plaster because it will crack. The other thing is jointing these blocks together. So they would have been built by the bricklayers. What the bricklayers should have done was remove the mortar fangs, or snots as we like to call them, from within inside the chimney. Because of the very small cross-sectional area of the flue system, it would be restricted even more by the fangs. And also spider's webs can connect onto it and even reduce it even more. So that's the first thing when you're looking up a chimney, remember don't use your mince pies, use a torch or your phone and a mirror so you can look up there, you don't want to be seeing any mortar fangs. Also, the manufacturers came up with this stuff. So this is a um, Dunbrick Special Flue Silicone and it's a class 2 gas flue boiler silicone um, 1581 and it's tested by British Gas, if that makes any... it's a bit hard now. Anyway, that's what you could have used to do the blocks together. So they could use this high temperature silicone. It's a special silicone, you just can't use any. You've got to use the silicone for the manufacturer's instructions and follow the manufacturer's instructions for it. So that's the dumb brick flue um, glue, or they could have used fire cement or sand and cement. But we've got to make sure there is no mortar fangs. Snots to you. Anyway, shall we have a look and see what this construction of this flue should be? So, you can see down here at the bottom, we require three starter blocks. And also, from the top of the outlet of the fire to the bottom of the gather or cover block, we needed a 600mm rise like we do with all open fluid appliances. So, like I say, we go from this three starter blocks to the cover or gather block, and what that does then is it funnels it out to the flue blocks. And then you can see the flue blocks are bonded. So bonded meaning it's built into the brickwork so it doesn't all fall down. Now, if these blocks have to change direction, the maximum angle you can have on this flue system is 30 degrees. How are you going to see that then? <laughs> Hopefully when they built it, but they were specially made blocks anyway, so they would have built those angles in there. So it would have a maximum ang angle of 30 degrees. That's not the twin wall flue system here, that's the actual flue blocks. So once we get to the top of the flue blocks, we then get the transfer block. Now the transfer block can be two different blocks. It can be a straight block where it just comes straight off the top, 
but like this one here is an angled block which then transfers it to the twin wall flue system now when you inspect these in the loft there should be an appliance adapter so that means if you see here the twin wall flue system is actually the inside part of the flue is connected to the appliance then there's an air gap and then there's the outer of the flue so like you would do on an open flue boiler you would have the appliance adapter so you're not connecting the outer of the flue into the blocks and again like all open fluid appliances maximum angle of the twin wall flue angle would be 45 degrees and then you can go to the terminal or you can go to a ridge terminal if we've got enough time at the end i'll sneak in the ridge terminal so that's basically what you get with the system and how it's put together like i say it's put together by the bricklayers it's not put together by the engineers but we still need to inspect them and we need still need to test them Flue flow test and spillage is exactly the same as what you would do on any open fluid appliance with a precast flue. So, <laughs> let's have a look at these a bit closer and see how big they need to be. It's here. So as you can see, the concrete blocks are made to BS EM1858 and the cross-sectional area is not less than 16,500 millimetres squared with a minimum internal diameter of 90 millimetres. So basically, what that means is the inside of there. So the distance from there to there cannot be less than 90 mil. Should we measure it and find out exactly what this one does? Let's just finish this first. But as you can see, before 1986, the cross-sectional area of the precast flue blocks was 13,000 millimetres squared, with a minimum diameter of 63 millimetres inside. So let's quickly measure these blocks and find out what this one is. So you can see this flue block is 185 millimetres long. and has this minimum width of 90 millimetres. So let's do the maths and find out what the cross-sectional area of this flue is then. So let's uh, do the maths with the calculator because you know how rubbish I am. So 185 times 90 gives us a cross-sectional area of 16,650 millimetres squared. So as you can see, it's big enough. So, I think I've got enough time to have a look at this uh, ridge terminal. So let's have a look at that then. Now, first of all, before we look at these measurements behind me here, let's go and have a close look at a ridge terminal and find out exactly what they're all about. So, this is the ridge terminal and this is what you would see on the roof. So this is where the products of combustion would come out. But when you're inside the roof, this is what you would see here. And this is the ridge adapter. And the ridge adapter needs to be clamped on either side, have no damage, and have a gasket on the inside. So that's what you would uh, see on the outside of a ridge terminal, if you've never seen one before. And you would have your flue pipe connected to here. And uh, that's your ridge adapter. So that's all it is. Let's have a look at these measurements here then. So you can see here, that the ridge terminal from a structure or another chimney needs to be more than 1.5 meters away so from a wall or from a chimney 1.5 meters away and if you've got two ridge terminals like we've got here then they need to be a minimum of 300 millimeters apart so that is my quick 10 minute look at precast flues or class 2 chimneys so if you've liked this video why don't you give me that thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below if you've not subscribed to my channel then please subscribe because it helps and don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want youtube to tell you when we're uploading these videos i think you know mondays and wednesdays but if you have any more 10 minute videos you want me to cover for acf revision just get them in those comments down below all i've got left to say is thanks for listening Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one guys. Cheers.